Airship Syndicate's work on the Ruin King, a League of Legends story weaves a wonderful tale that is primed to capture League of Legends fans new and old. Blending the design ideas of its previous turn-based RPG, Battle Chasers Night War, with League of Legends lore, it brings together a handful of favorite characters and gives them room to grow over the course of a lengthy and well-paced campaign. While some bugs slowed me down, a compelling story, gorgeous graphic novel style art, modest character development, and versatile combat kept me entertained as I finally got to experience the world of Runeterra from a different perspective. Riot has spent the last decade creating diverse, unique, and memorable characters for its MOBA, but until recently, they've been showcased mainly through video shorts. All that changed in November 2021, first with Netflix's brilliant animated series Arcane, and now, The Ruined King and its vast amount of dialogue and backstory, fans like myself can dive far deeper into what makes at least a small portion of the 157 character roster so special. Heroes and villains play the roles necessary to move the average stop the villain from destroying the world story along, and while I found it predictable, the execution is still enjoyable thanks to the charming voice work of Matt Mercer, Laura Bailey, Liam O'Brien, and others who reprise their roles from League of Legends. Ari, Brahm, Alawi, Misfortune, Pike, and Yasuo are each on journeys that resourcefully intertwine and unfold depicted in a gorgeous graphic novel art style. Characters are challenged by their own relatable, yet all too familiar trials of vengeance, acceptance, and self-discovery. It did the job of keeping me invested across my roughly 30-hour main campaign playthrough, and while the main story is enjoyable without any prior knowledge of the League of Legends universe, many of the best moments come from side conversations at rest points where characters tell stories grounded in their world by established lore. Oh, you want to kill me last. That's sweet. It isn't sweet. Those were sometimes too much of a good thing, though. The Ruined King has a habit of packing a lot of these revealing chats back to back instead of spacing them out evenly. Meanwhile, a few things wrap up abruptly, like Yasuo's main arc, which is constrained to a singular battle and then almost never mentioned again. That was odd because he was so well-developed in his captivating side conversations with the ever-jovial Brom. Brom must uh, sit. Which way is the ground? What makes Ruin King's battle system interesting and versatile is how its speed, balanced, and power attack types play out on the initiative bar timeline, and the counter siege. Casting Misfortune's guns blazing ability in the power lane slows her down before raising her haste and evasion, but it pushes her allies forward in their turn order. Meanwhile, speed casting Ari's Spirit Mend will heal and cleanse two debuffs from an ally or revive them if they are already KO'd. There's a lot to consider on most turns. Mechanics like boons, hazards, and wild cards continue to evolve for the first half of the main story, though it takes its time introducing new ideas. From that point on, it's more about demonstrating your level of mastery of all the systems, such as finishing an enemy off in 10 hits or less to prevent them from self-destructing and dealing massive AoE damage. Most battles were entertaining, especially when I cranked up the battle speed after the novelty of the animations wore off. It was a lot of fun to play. There's a finite amount of skill points available by the time you max out at level 30, but you're encouraged to experiment by overriding upgrades on a weapon or armor for a reasonable cost of materials, and you're able to reallocate skill points and runes, which is effortless and efficient. It let me play around with giving Alawi a secondary role as a healer or building Misfortune as a support to simultaneously buff allies and debuff my enemies. That said, The Ruined King isn't going to ruin a lot of experienced RPG players with its difficulty. Even on the hardest setting, I rarely lost a battle except at the hands of a new enemy specifically designed to test my mastery of a recently introduced mechanic by one-shotting you if you don't watch out. The combat system really hits its stride in the latter half though, especially as party dynamics are challenged regularly to teach the value of synergy when fighting certain enemies. Hardly worth the ammo. I used to dream of sailing the far off lands, seeing all there was to see. But Bilgewater has become my whole world. One disappointment is that the Ruined King doesn't take us on a more expansive tour of Runeterra. 
Even after spending the first half dozen hours in Bilgewater and gaining access to my ship, we're only able to visit a couple of other locations that start to feel all too similar after a while. Even Windrake Isle, which starts out full of vibrant emerald greens, oranges, and reds, while on the surface, immediately reverts back to the muted blue and green color palette seen in the Purification and Buru temples. Most locations do have plenty to explore, and at least are inhabited with standard NPCs, enemies, optional quests, fishing spots, bounties to hunt, and puzzles to solve. The only catch is a poor map system that won't even let you zoom in or mark locations. I also have to report that the Ruined King suffers from some game crashing bugs that I routinely encountered on the PS5, and they sometimes happen at important story moments. I also saw glitches like character models becoming invisible and unable to interact with objects, and some save file corruption that cost me some progress. The more time I spent playing the Ruined King A League of Legends story, the more I found myself wanting from the League of Legends universe. The gorgeous graphic novel art, accompanied by modest character development and fantastic voice work, and a solid story kept me engaged from start to finish. The intricate yet easy to digest turn-based battle and upgrade systems generally reward experimentation and exploration while allowing more methodical strategies to shine. On the other hand, untimely and frequent game crashing bugs, a mediocre map screen, and a limited variety of locations are all minor headaches, but considering that we've been waiting years for the League of Legends universe to branch out to other genres, the turn-based RPG format of The Ruined King is an absolute fit. For more League of Legends content and other RPGs, check out our reviews for Arcane or Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And for everything else, you're already in the right place, IGN. Unwet. Let's get back to it.